principal chef d'état africain. Africa is the only continent in the world where the people sing and dance and applaud those who impoverish them, who starve them, and who torture them. The misfortune of Africa is to have met France, end of quote. It's true that the West was violent with Africa, raped it, and stole from Africa. So what is our share of the responsibility in all of this as African leaders? Is it not us, the African leaders, who have abandoned our identity? Our names have disappeared in order to make way for other names that do not match our realities. We need to reconquer our own culture and take ownership. And that's why today people try to make us believe that our values and our ad attitudes are not natural and are not part of freedom and that there will never be a question of homosexuality for us. Let me repeat that homosexuality will not take root in our countries. Mr. President, now what's just been described are very unfortunate labels used by the UN that can be summed up as follows. 1.2 million people who are in the depths of poverty. 2,000 or 2, $2 billion dollars of the United States money in, invested in weapons, 20 times the budget of the United Nations invested in the nuclear, and all of these should be compared to issues of development. Africa gets from the IMF and the World Bank $34 billion vis-a-vis -vis $160 billion invested in the West. The paralysis of the Security Council, the paralysis of the World Trade Organization, increasing tensions due to geostrategic repositioning. The World Health Organization, which is increasingly dominated by Western pharmaceutical companies and trade interests. We see this, for example, with the priority attached in terms of trade to vaccines against COVID-19. The United Nations is more and more in the shadows of its own attempts of being taken hostage by a conglomerate of international powers. Now, by consequent of all this, the African people, generally speaking, and in the Sahel specifically, will fight tooth and nail so that ECOWAS and the African Union and even the United Nations become service institutions truly in the service of the peoples of the world for the profound emancipation of these peoples and true social progress. Because the lack of these organizations, their inefficiency, their lack of sincerity, their client-based decisions and variable geometry, their crimes, the promotion of bad governance, looting, dis social disorganization and corruption all lead unfailingly to coup d'etats, which are then just consequences of all the aforementioned. So let's look at the root causes, which will disappear. If we continue with this putting our heads in the sand like the ostrich, with this hypocritical form of diplomacy, with state sponsored crimes and organized crime, state-sponsored lies, constitutional lies, and the making heads of state for Africa. Even the United Nations will not be spared this coup d'etat. In this regard, and in order to take our destiny in our own hands, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso signed the Partnership of the States of the Sahel, which is abbreviated as the AES. The AES is an architecture that was set up to secure our countries by a treaty with revised authority for development, including the region of Liptogorma. Taking into account the security situation and the lack of a partnership, what's at stake here is our own resources and working together in order to eradicate discontinuity in operational maneuvering. Mr. President, I say here with force and firmly in an intelligible and high spoken voice the following. First, we African peoples are profoundly democratic by way of proof. Our attachment to human dignity goes beyond democracy. It transcends it. What we refuse is the lesser democracy, this trap of democracy, which has been extended electoral-based democracy, which turned out to be a way of controlling our states through playing musical chairs with the leaders who are often imposters and corrupt, who steal and rape. Second, we Africans are today recognized in our dignity as people in the sense of one person is equal to one person. 
The answer is no. Above and beyond circumstances that have been set forth to put us to sleep, but rather to serve us. That is the African and black continent, which is scientifically recognized as the very cradle of humanity and civilization that has been placed under control and domination. Independent fact factions who have engaged in fratricidal wars and election-based democracy with biased aids, wars for terrorism which are maliciously fabricated and maintained, injected against us, especially in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Dominating us, that's what it's all about. Stepping on our necks, as was the case of the unfortunate George Floyd in the United States. Is that democracy? These are partisans of a special kind of liberty that is intellectually justified to justify barbarism against our peoples, fighting supposedly for dignity and sovereignty. And that's why we have decided to say no. No to all these so-called friends who want our so-called good or who threaten us with war to impose their friendship. That's why we want... We don't want the democracy sold to us by wolves in sheep's clothing. We need to provide adequate leadership for our people so they can seek their own happiness, for the full emancipation and true social progress for our people, be it economic, social, social, cultural, or security development. Third, the African people, generally speaking, and in the Sahel specifically, have discovered the chains of economic, security, social, cultural alienation that have materialized in secret agreements with France where they committed to break their true emancipation. This includes, amongst others, the colonial debt. We will not turn a blind eye to this and pay it while allowing our people to die of hunger or thirst or disease. Second, the issue of the currency, the franc CFA. This is called the franc of the French African colonies. This is not African property. Legally speaking, property is the right to be able to dispose of something in the most absolute way, according to Article 544 of the French Civil Code. A patent is therefore held by France on the currency of the French CFA, and therefore it is the property, but it's the property of the African Francophone states. And what's amusing here is that the bills are produced by France for West Africa, and they're different from those of Central Africa, even though it's supposedly the same currency. The same document recognizes the French CFA by decree 45 of the 26 December 1945 and it was signed this legislation was signed by Charles de Gaulle president of the temporary French government René Plévin ministry of finance and Jacques Sousnel the minister of colonies at the time next the priority and interest for French companies in bids for public procurement and public offers. And finally, the exclusive right to provide equipment and military equipment and other types of military officers and colonies. If we ignore that these coup d'etats are often the result of bad governance and constitutional maneuvers in order to provide additional mandates, that will always happen. We need to be lucid about this and root out the real causes and require respect of democratic rules and virtuous governance. Five, the African people don't have a problem with the French people. It's rather the French policies and politics we have a problem with, the condescendence. That's what we reject. Refusing an ambassador to Niger is a violation of international law especially Article uh, 1 and 2 of the Vienna Convention and Paragraph 9 on Diplomatic Relations of 1961. By deciding to refuse artists from Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger in France, that is a serious undermining of cultural wealth and refusal of recognition. An artist is a psychic doctor, even at long distance. By declaring them, we do not want to have people unemployed, migrants and thieves and so forth in France. 
We do not want the looting, the cynical looting of our resources. What we want is a sincere recognition of our peoples throughout the world, which includes Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, that we should be accompanied in this difficult time on our path towards full emancipation with expression of dignity, honor, liberty, equality, prosperity, justice, and then, of course, peace. Given the situation currently in Burkina Faso, the Burkina Bay government has implemented vigorous action to adopt a new development plan, the Action Plan for Stabilization and Development, with four main pillars of priorities. First, to fight terrorism and restore territorial integrity. Second, response to the humanitarian crisis. Three, restore the state and improve governance. And finally, national reconciliation and social cohesion. These efforts are geared to providing the Burkina Bay population with better living conditions while commending our partners who have accompanied us, we heartily invite them, those who still have a doubt or who might be tempted by the false content of reports on what is happening, we invite them to accompany us with the following conditions. Long live the United Nations, long live this 78th session of the General Assembly, long live the people who fight, long live solidarity, long live free Africa, long live the states of the Sahel, long live until victory.